Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to this webinar. Um, it's on digital resources for beginning students and their teachers. My name is Alisa Takeuchi. I am an ESL instructor at Garden Grove um, Adult Education. I'm also a subject matter expert, also known as a SME, for OTAN. I've been with OTAN for about three years now. And as of three weeks ago, I am a remote instructor in Sacramento. Oops. So here's our agenda for today. Um, we'll do a little bit of an introduction, and then we'll talk about some teaching strategies. We'll go over some resources for students, and then we'll take a closer look at some of those resources. And then um, hopefully we'll leave time for question and answers at the end. So in the classroom for beginning level teachers, this is not new news. Um, when we're in the classroom, if we were teaching technology uh, at all, we had um, what was called managed devices. That means like for me, I had a Chromebook cart and all my students had Chromebooks and we all opened them at the same time and we were all in the same place at the same time. Um, I could troubleshoot for them instantly. I'd walk around the classroom, I'd see if they were where we were supposed to be at, if anybody couldn't log in or wasn't at the web page, I could help them instantly. We, had, um, we would have direct instruction, and if anybody's been to my presentations before, um, you know that I pre-teach everything at least three or four times um, before the students even open their Chromebooks. So when they do actually open the Chromebooks, they know what to expect. It's not going to be flawless. Um, there are going to be some complications, but at least the students understand uh, somewhat where they need to be and how to get there. Um, and also in the classroom, we have the classroom and time management. What that means is that I dictate how long or when we are using technology in the classroom. So, for example, um, I would say, oh, we are going to be on the Chromebooks from 1030 to 11 or let's do Chromebooks for 25 minutes today. So there is a managed amount of time and when they would be using them. Always in the room, especially for our level, it, the language is a barrier. Um, I have to be very specific in the things that I say to them in very basic vocabulary and always um, make sure that you speak the instructions and have them written down. Um, when we talk about computer literacy, um, we all know that it's different for teachers and for students. You might have a beginning level English student, but high computer literacy skills. Or the opposite, you might have an advanced English student with low literacy skills, and same goes with teachers. Um, some teachers are very tech savvy, and then other teachers are, you know, it's a challenge for them. So those are all things to consider, even while we're in the classroom. Now, when we're talking about remotely, um, things have changed. Um, now, all of a sudden, we have multiple devices. And I mean, lots of different devices. And so I can only teach what I am familiar with, or I can only troubleshoot what I'm familiar with. So maybe a student is on a desktop. Maybe the student's on a PC versus a Mac, or they're on a iPad or a Kindle or their phone. Maybe they're on an Android versus um, an iPhone. I mean, there's so many variables all at the same time. And so that makes it very limited troubleshooting. I, I really can only help students with devices that I'm familiar with. Direct instruction, I put a question mark out there is because it's very limited. I, I can teach them, I can pre-teach still, um, sort of. And I'm hoping that they're understanding. I can't, I can't look in their faces. I can't, I can't do comprehension questions. I can't do all those things where I get instant feedback to know if I can move on or not. So that's very difficult as well. And then the time. Oh my gosh. That first week that we were off, I was probably on my computer about 16 hours every day, every single day because I was so desperate to get my students con connected with me that any time they replied or responded to me via text or email, I responded right back. And that's not, you know, your classroom. That's not 8.30 to 11 and 11 o'clock, bye, Elisa, see you tomorrow. And I'm like, bye, students. This is like two o'clock in the afternoon, they're responding to me, five o'clock in the afternoon, 7.30, 10 o'clock at night. So uh, it was really maddening for me that very first week. Um, and I had to really step back. 
So that's what I mean by unlimited time. They're responding and they're, they're doing their homework or they're doing their, their assignments at any given time during the day because it depends on their situation at home, um, whether they're, they have access to their um, devices or their Wi-Fi. Or some of them are still, many of my students are still working. Um, of course, oopsie. So of course the language is still a problem and then their access to Wi-Fi. The one good thing though that I have asterisk at the bottom is that I am desperately, um, I am desperately um, relying that the family can help them now. They're at home, they're with their children, they're with other people that you know speak English well, or maybe are more computer literate than them. I'm desperate that they're gonna help them. Um, I can only do so much and I'm just, relying that the, the children are helping. Most likely it's going to be like their children or their grandchildren or nieces and nephews um, that are going to say, here, let me show you how to do it. Or this is what she's saying, you know, blah, blah, blah. So that's been really helpful as well. So these are just the two slides, back to back, the last two slides. And in a matter of days, for me, um, I was at school. I, don't, I teach Monday through Thursday. I don't teach on Fridays, but I happen to be at school on that Friday. And we got an email over the weekend saying that school was closed on Monday. So I didn't even get to say goodbye to my students. I mean, I didn't even get to say like, you know, we're not coming back. I had to like reach out to them um, as, as well as I could. And my mind was scrambling now. How am I going to get hold of my students? And I'm sure that was the same for you. And Elisa, there's a yeah. question that came up in the chat. Sure. Um, I'm just going to remind everybody, please submit your questions to the presenter on the Q&A, but I am going to read this one because it's important. Sure. What are the options for teachers with no internet access? What can they do? Oh, for the teachers themselves that don't have internet? Um, okay, That's so... I'm reading it, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so at the beginning of this whole thing, what I had heard, but I don't know for a fact, is that many um, internet service providers were providing internet services to teachers and students either at a very low cost or free for us, you know, like X amount of time. So um, I believe like Comcast was one of them. That was what I heard. Um, Spectrum. Um, I'm not too sure about others, but you might want to check if you don't have any internet at all right now, or you don't have a, a cable or, or something like that. Check with some, just call around with some service providers and ask them if they, you know, say I'm a teacher. Um, I, I need internet access and see what they can offer you. Um, I've heard that um, that people are just being really generous right now, especially to teachers because they understand. And, you know, of course, that is a business standpoint. Also, you know, we're, they're hoping that, you know, once the, this is all over that you're, you'll remain with them, you know, blah, blah, blah. But, but that's, that's the best I can do. Otherwise, um, I don't really know. I mean, unless other people have ideas also, um, please um, include there, it. It's quite a few ideas going in the chat now, Elisa. Great. Thank you. Oh, thanks so much. That was a good question. Very good question because that is difficult. <clears throat> All right, too much is too much. Um, please, I can't emphasize this enough. <laughs> in the past three weeks, I've probably been to more webinars than I have been in 10 years. <laughs> I mean, there's just, in, in a good way, there have been so many people stepping up, OTAN, Katisal, um, you know, other people that are coming up with these like on the spot webinars for us, these sessions to come to just like this one to um, help us because we're desperate. We're grasping for anything, but please, please, please um, pick and choose, pick and choose what you want. I mean, it's, it's, you can't do it all and, and you can't just for the benefit of your students too. It's too much for them. They're just trying to get online one and then they're just trying to connect with you too. Yeah, and everything else is bonus. So, I mean, this is like one-tenth of some of the things that are available out there um, that, that I've just, you know, that have been um, produced recently with webinars and such. Um, it goes on and on and on. But with that said, let me show you even more. Choose tools that enhance your life. If you've been to any of my presentations, I tell you this all the time. And all these resources, any resource, it needs to enhance your life, not suffocate it. 
you need to make sure that you understand it. So when it says it's easy, that's relative. What's easy for me may not be easy for you. You have to pick and choose what is going to be easy, quote unquote, for you and your students. Um, make sure that it's fun. And I'm not talking about like it's always fun all the time, like gamifications, which are fun, but you can't do gamification um, like Kahoot and quizzes and things like that all the time. It's, it, it gets boring after a while. Um, but it gets the job done. Make sure that, you know, whatever it is that you're choosing gets the job done. Don't do it just to do it um, because students will show lack of interest and um, they'll stop. They'll, they'll, you know, it's, like, it's like coming to class. If they're not interested in the class, they'll stop coming. All right, here's a break time for us. So please, everybody, take a deep breath two times. Me too. There's just too much stuff. Mm, the last three weeks have been a swirl, a, sw a whirlwind of things. Um, Melinda, is there anything pressing or There's questions? There's a question uh, again in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been good in the Q&A. Uh, <laughs> what platform are you guys using to conduct your classes? We are being asked to use Canvas, which is a bit complicated. Mm -hmm. I can't yeah. imagine my students using it to connect with me. So do you have a platform at Garden Grove? Um, we have several. Okay, so at, in Garden Grove, um, we've been very fortunate that our director has been very open with us in that, that she is allowing us individually to decide what is best for our class. There are other agencies where the director, the principal has been very um, managed in the fact that they tell the teachers, you must use this, and that's, you know, there's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. Uh, good or bad it depends um like the one for canvas if you're not familiar with canvas then that's extra difficult because now you are going to have to learn how that's the whole thing with this whole thing too is that teachers need to learn how to use the resources before they can show their students that's doubly you know um, difficult or challenging for us as beginning esl teachers because we're not only learning it for ourselves but now how do we communicate that to our teach our students so with Canvas or Schoology, Google Classroom, Moodle, um, you know, they are managed, you know, they're learning management systems. And so they're very organized. But again, if you're not familiar with it, you, it's, it's a lot of work because you have to familiarize yourself with it and then you have to find a way to communicate that. Now, with that said, thank goodness, throughout this whole thing, even before, there are tons of resources out there on how to learn Canvas, how to learn Moodle, how to learn uh, Google Classroom. OTAN has done a tremendous job of getting all of those um, tech talks and videos out there, and it's on the OTAN webpage. Um, please use it. Use those um, tutorials to help you help your students. That was a good question. Anything else? There's a few uh, comments, just people chiming in on the, the type of uh, LMSs that they use. Uh, Google Classroom has come up uh, quite a few times. Some people love Canvas. So, and somebody made a good point. Use something that, um, that your students are already familiar with, if you can. Yeah. Don't put them in a new uh, pool if they're already used to the, the pool that you've been using in class, I guess. Yeah, I mean, if, if you can help it, I mean, um, you know, like I said, some agencies um, have, uh, are under directorship that, you know, that they must use a certain platform. And um, hopefully it's just, it's one that you've been using already in your, at your school, but, um, but it's not always the case. Great. Thank you so much. Those are good. Okay, so where to begin? Let me take you on my journey about what happened. So I told you that I was, I just happened to be at school on Friday. I don't work on Fridays, but I just happened to be at school and I found out that our school wouldn't be open on Monday and I didn't know what to do. So fortunately for me, I had already started using Google Voice. Now, if you don't know what Google Voice is, it's a phone, it's a Google phone number that runs through email. And for me, um, I used it with my students because they needed to tell me whether they were, if they were gonna be absent or if they had to leave you know, earlier, come late or something. And it's texting for them. It goes to their phone, their cell phone. They text it to me, but it goes to my Gmail account. So they don't have my personal cell phone number, but they, they're typing, they're texting as if they are. 
And for me, that worked out really, really well because I used to give my cell phone number and I didn't have a problem with that. That was not a big deal for me. But I sometimes I got texts at five o'clock in the morning. Sometimes I got texts at 11 o'clock p.m. And that was a little bit too much. So I decided to get the Google Voice number. And, um, and for me, I type faster than I text. So to get their texts and such on email was a lot better because then I just respond to an email. And I'm going to show you all this um, later if you're not familiar with it. Alisa, we have a question. Are there any privacy issues we should consider before using texts, phones, Zoom? Yes. And um, I, I don't know, like, legality. I don't know, like, tech, you know, like, the, the yes. <laughs> um, there's always going to be privacy issues. Um, and it might come to the point where um, you may just have to connect with your student, you know, maybe via text and just say, are, are, is it okay if I text you? Or is it okay if I use your phone number? Or, you know, and, and things and, and maybe just asking the permission. And, and again, that's a little bit difficult because of our, the level of our students, the English level, but hopefully they can use either Google Translate or have somebody at their home explain what it is that you're asking them. And if anybody's not comfortable, you know, using text or, you know, they don't want their phone number or such, Mm, you're going to have to maybe talk to your administrator about that because, um, you know, otherwise <laughs> everything's so up in the air. It's like, I'm trying to think of like how we would handle it at my school, but uh, you know, honestly, I really just don't know. I mean, is it a matter of they won't continue as a student in the fall? Well, you know, that's not really fair, but that might be the way, or, you know, they'll, you know, does it press upon registration, things like that. Uh, you know, everything's so up in the air, but I think for the most part, um, everybody's trying to give each other a little slack. You know, um, we want the best for our students. And for right now, for me, you know, communicating with me via text or email is the best thing I can think of. But if they're just not comfortable with it, you can't push it. So I hope that um, helped a little bit. Um, as far as security, yeah, I'm not too sure. I haven't had an issue yet, so, you know, knock on wood. Um, Google Voice is a free app. Um, I don't use my personal cell phone number. Um, I email instead of text. Um, they can actually call me. They can call that phone number. It's an actual phone number. Uh, it's a seven, for me, it's a 714 number. And they can actually call it and leave me a voicemail. And the voicemail will get transcribed. Now, <laughs> if I have time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what one of those looks like. Because, of course, you know, with our students and their accents and their low-level English, you know, the transcribing is not, uh, you know, 100%. But it's very cute. And, you know, because we know our students, so, you know, we, we all speak ESL. So we can kind of decipher what they're saying. Um, in general, not even just with your students, it is free. Um, you can make phone calls and texts for free. So this is another alternative, kind of like um, WhatsApp or, you know, things like that, where you can make phone calls for free. Um, and then students can send pictures through their texting, as if they're texting me a picture, but it's going to go to my Gmail and not my phone, which is a good thing for me because I don't want a lot of that memory in my phone um, stored. Okay, so that's what I did. I So I... Okay, our school gave me my roster and on the roster it had all the phone numbers of my students. And um, so what I did was I, I Google voiced them and I sent them a, a, te a te quote unquote text saying, please email me at alisateacherj2 at gmail.com. So I created a whole new Gmail just for this situation where I wanted students to contact me via um, at this particular address and I said if you don't have Gmail try to create one that's all I could say because I can't I, I was literally going to on Monday when we were going to come back to school we were going to start to learn how to create a Gmail I had the stack of papers on my on my desk and because that was now not available I had to just I just had to give it up I had to give up the control of of trying to do this with them and just say please have somebody help you and it worked um, I, the students who had Gmail already emailed or email, not even just Gmail. I preferred Gmail, but if they even just had email, I was fine. Yahoo or Hotmail or whatever it was. They started emailing me at that new address. And I'll tell you why that's important. Um, some of them were sending me in the text, their email address. And I said, please, I, I wrote them right back. And I said, please email me 
at that address because I didn't want to go through and have to type an email every single time. So if they sent me an email, that means I have their email address already in my um, contacts list. And we'll talk about that too. So here's what um, a response was. So um, <laughs> I had, <laughs> I gave them a test, which is like, oh my God, Elisa, how could you do that? But I guess, so I gave them a test and um, on YouTube and um, one of the, he wrote back and he said, I did the test. And then this is his picture of the test. So he was able to take a photo of his paper and then text it to me. And I got it in my email. So that was pretty interesting. I mean, it was kind of a, an experiment because I didn't know how it was going to work, but it worked out pretty well. So I was, I was pretty happy with that. All right, email. So I, I literally, so this is going to be very quick. Before Gmail, what email did you use? I'm just curious. And this should go in the chat. Yahoo, Yahoo, IGC.org, Yahoo, school.email, Yahoo, 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 come in. Oh my God, it's going so fast. at t AOL. I did not see AOL, did I? <laughs> um, Earthlink. Uh, yeah. Before Gmail? <laughs> Question. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, okay. Rocket Mail. Yes. Email, I still use it. Yahoo still, Hotmail, AOL, yeah. District Email, Hotmail, Hotmail. Okay. okay. I just literally, I just wanted to see what some of the answers were, but just because I thought it was so funny. I've asked this at another agency one time and somebody said Juno and I went, oh my gosh, I haven't heard that in such a long time. And some of you are probably just laughing going, oh yeah, I had a Juno account. All right. So the reason why, oopsie, I'm sorry. The reason why I like Gmail so much is because um, it's very user friendly and and it's of course it's free i have multiple i mean linda can, can attest to this also i have multiple gmail accounts um for various things and um it's not difficult to um, connect to each of my gmails at the same time so that's kind of why i like it now for this purpose for what we're going through right now it has been absolutely um so helpful and and i you know i'm sorry i can't speak on hotmail and i can't speak on other email services because i don't know if they do this but i would assume there's something pretty close to it in gmail i have created a contact list i made a group so that's why it was important for for my students to send me an email first so that i had a list of all of their email addresses in one place and then i can just click 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 create a group, and now when I want to send an email, I send one email to everybody at the same time. And that has been super helpful. I mean, it's kind of, you know, it's the same theory as Remind and WhatsApp and things where you just have a group of uh, people and you just do one thing at one time and send it to everybody. It really, really saves a lot of time and sanity. Um, you can extend the send time. Um, I've done this in other presentations where in the settings, um, when you hit send, it, the default is five seconds. It will give you five seconds to undo. You can actually go through and change that to 30 seconds, which can really help. If you send something and you're like, oh, I didn't mean to send it or there was something else, you can undo the send and it won't, it won't send it anymore. It'll come back. So that's really helpful. Um, in just in life in general. <laughs> I could save your job. Um, you can label emails so that uh, all my emails that are coming from my students in my morning class, I can label it a certain color and my night students, I can label a different color so that I can kind of keep track. It's just kind of organization skills. You can snooze emails. So sometimes um, students have emailed me back with their homework or, or whatever, or just to say hi, and I don't have time to reply to them right then and there, but I really want to, because it's really important that if somebody sends you something, you've got to reply. And so what I could do is I can hit a snooze, and after a certain amount of time, it'll go back to the top of my list, because you know when you get emails, it just gets buried at the bottom, and then you forget about it. What this will do is it'll put it back to the top of the list so that I go, oh yes, I need to reply to this person. And then with Gmail, we also have Hangouts and Meet. Hangouts, <clears throat> excuse me, is um, chatting um, and also video conferencing. And then Meet, uh, Hangouts is with Gmail and Meet is with your G Suite. So if you're using your work email, um, then you can actually have a Zoom-like experience with um, Meet. Um, so that's been 
you know, that's just another um, alternative to Zoom. Well, Lisa, we have some questions on email. Would you like them now or? or yeah, no, let's do it now. Okay. Um, what percentage of your literacy students have been able to use email with you? <laughs> that's a really good question. I've had to be pretty patient with it, but it's, it's turned out. So between my two classes, I have a morning class and a, a night class, and they're both beginning literacy. I have 67 students. Um, right now, I have 38 sending, okay, 38 that have sent me an email. So that means I have their email address. And uh, from those 38, I probably correspond regularly um, to about 27 or so. So there are some that have sent me an email, but then I've never heard from them again. <laughs> so uh, I'm not sure what happened with that, but either like somebody set them, set it up for them and they're just not able to go back to opening their email or they just, you know, nobody's giving them uh, space, you know, or a kind of device to open it. So um, yeah, I, for me, five would have been fine. You know, I, any amount would have been fine, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with what I have right now. Um, there are still a few that I haven't heard from either with, oh, I'm sorry. And then also through a Google Voice, I have three students, three students who haven't made an email, but they still communicate with me via Google, I mean, via texting. So I have, so then so that makes it about 30. So a little bit less than half, 50%. Um, so, uh, you know, for me, that's, that's okay. I'm okay with that. Um, there are some agencies that I've heard that are very, that are being pressured about making sure that they get attendance. And again, like I say, you can only do so much, you know, you can only reach out so much. And, um, if they aren't responding back to you, uh, you know, you can keep trying and just telling them, I care about you and I hope that you're okay to, or just to like, well, if I haven't heard from you, then, you know, I hope you're okay and, and let it go. Um, so these are my contact lists. So as you can see, I have 39 students, or I have 39 people in this particular contact list, and this is what it looks like. So when I'm sending a new message, all I have to do is type L-E-C-J-2, and all of these names appear. And um, I always, make sure that you keep put yourself in your contact list, so that you always get a, a, uh, an email to yourself, what the students are looking at too. Um, for me, it just keeps, it's a nice uh, track sheet for me. Um, and then I'll tell you another thing too. I didn't, the screenshot is a little deceiving because this is not how it, how I did it, but um, I'll show you in a minute. All right, so student resources. Um, we have two mindsets going on. Let me check my time real quick, okay. So we have two mindsets. Um, is it a resource or is it managed instruction? And we'll talk about that. So these are some of the um, resources that I personally use with my students, um, except for putting English to work. This is a new one, and I'm thinking about doing it in the future, but I'm not, I haven't started it yet. But these are other ones that I've used with my students. Now, what I mean by resource is, is it just something I'm going to show my students how to do, and they're going to do it on their own? They can choose what activity they do, they choose what, when to do it, you know, for how long, or is it managed instruction where I say, okay, um, on Monday, I want you to finish, I want you to go to Learning Chocolate and finish um, colors and, um, you know, let me know that you finished by Tuesday. So, you know, again, it's not like classroom time where it's 8.30 to 11, but it's like I give them time because I never know when they're able to get on the, you know, on the computer or on their device. So, um, but that's just managed. Like I'm telling them which, which, um, uh, what's it called? What, which section to go to, which, you know, um, what to study, and then when to study it. So that's, those are things that you're going to have to keep in mind about what you want from your students. Um, so let's talk about learningchocolate.com. It is by far the easiest user-friendly website that I could give my students, and I was late on the bandwagon with this. Um, we have a couple of teachers at my school that were using it and kept going on and on and on about it, and I was like, I don't know. It's just one more thing. Da, da, da. And then all of a sudden I, I just said, okay, I'm just going to try it. And it worked like a charm. It is so, so easy. I literally told the students go to the, okay. So in the classroom, it was go to Chrome because we were using Chromebooks. Now you cannot say go to Chrome. You have to say go to the internet because we don't know what device they're using. 
whether it's Safari or, you know, um, if it's um, Chrome or, you know, all the other ones. Um, so I just say go to the internet. They understand that. And then I say learningchocolate.com. Now, I have learned, please learn from my mistakes. If you're typing out instructions for your students, do not write the word type. Type learningchocolate.com because they will literally type type, if that makes sense. They will put T-Y-P-E-L-E-A-R-N-I-N-G. And so that's a problem. So I've learned not to do that anymore. I just tell them what the website is, and I, I just take it for granted that they understand to type that in there. <clears throat> Lisa, is this um, is this site available on uh, mobile? Is it mobile friendly? Yes, that's a great question. It is, and we tested it in my classroom. And my classroom has, I mean, my school has limited Wi-Fi. Um, we don't have, well, we don't even have Wi-Fi for guests. And for whatever reason, the powers of be, some of my students were able to get on in my classroom. So I know that they'll be able to get on at home if they have Wi-Fi. Um, so they they type learningchocolate.com. Um, sometimes it will tell, it will, um, it'll show them like the list of websites and then just tell them to go to the home. And then, so here's, here's what, here's what it is. So they can, um, choose any, there's, I only cut, the picture is cut off. There's a, there's a lot of resources in there, or you can tell them to go to category and choose a category and, you know, it depends on what it is. So if they want, if you want them to do classroom, um, whatever it is they want, you want them to study or whatever they want to study. So it, it, is it a resource or is it a managed um, instruction? Okay, there are five components. This is what's nice about learning chocolate too. Every single um, lesson is the same. So it has a matching one, a matching two, a matching three, a fill in, which is listening, and then dictation, which is the listening and typing. So, um, so first off, the students will listen, yellow, orange, red, and then they'll do the matching, you know, and it's, the, the hard part about this is that you, you would have to teach them the word drag because they have to drag from one to another. So they have to drag um, the, you know, the answer to the question. And that's how it is with all of these. And I'll show you that when we get to the, the, the website. USA Learns. There's been plenty of webinars and talk about USA Learns. Um, it's a really good resource for um, for all of, for uh, beginning through intermediate. So they have a, a one, two, and a three uh, level. They also have the new citizenship. So if any of your students are are still studying to be citizens, um, then they can practice their citizenship. And then they're also coming up with a new um, program. Uh, maybe by the end of the year, or it depends on now with all this going on, but it's called Access America. And what it's going to be is it'll be a series of um, how-tos, basically, for students or new immigrants to the country, like how to um, apply for college, how to uh, get a bank account, how to, you know, things like that. So it's going to be a series of, of, of instructions on that. And that's going to be, that's coming up soon. And that'll be all on USA Learns. Now, the thing with USA Learns is that there's an email that needs to be required. So that's tough. And, you know, if you're still having the problem of, you know, my students don't have email or I can't get my students to have an email or get an email, that's, that's one of the difficulties. So I've been talking with Andrea Willis, who's the director of USA Learns, and we've been trying to figure out alternative ways to get them signed up, but still be able to track. And so we're in the works of that, but that won't happen for quite a while. Um, there is a teacher management system. Again, you can also just introduce your students to USA Learns and they're, they're on their own. They can do it as much or as little as they like and you know, whatever lessons, or you can put them in a classroom, um, a, a USA Learns classroom, and then you can manage and you can you know, tell them do lesson one today or do lesson five and um, you can track them and see how long they've been on it. Typing club. So this is just out of just, I'm just, giving you this only because it's so student friendly. Typing Club is a typing uh, website and it is literally as easy as typingclub.com, get started, boom, they're in lessons to start typing. There's no account, there's no um, tracking necessary. They can, if you see up here, there is a login, they can sign up, you can sign up also. You can also do a classroom and again, if you want to manage them a little bit more, um, put them in a classroom and track their progress and blah, blah, blah. But um, for, for my students, I just showed them this and I just let it up to them. 
um, because I wanted to know if typing was still a necessary skill, and I found out it is. It really is a, a necessary skill still, and uh, but I just let them do it on their own. Um, ESL America. One of the teachers that I work with, Donna Barr, um, and um, OTAN's um, own Blair Roy, created this website called ESL America. And I'm telling you, it is one of the best websites out there. Everything in it has sound, which is very um, rare. You don't find something that has everything, every component in the website has the sound, has sound in one form or another, whether it's just a listening or whether it's dictation, um, it's incredible. And there are so many elements to it. I, I had to cut the screen off, but I mean, th this is just part of the things that are offered to the students. And um, some of them are links to other websites, but again, everything has sound. And then some of them are teacher created and um, she has dictation in there. She's got tons of stuff. So um, please, I urge you to check out this. It's very user friendly. Um, many of the, the teachers at my school um, have their students use it a lot. Uh, putting English to work. This is the only, so I used this a long, long, long time ago when it was in VHS. And if you're like, if you don't understand what VHS is, then I'm a little bit upset, but that's okay. That's, that's neither here nor there. Uh, but I used to use the VHS tapes um, for this series and I haven't used it in a very, very long time. But um, LA, um, LA Unified, their, their DACE program, the department, of, they have put all of the English to work series online with the worksheets. And so if you go to keeplearning.wearedace.org, you will find the putting English to work series on there. There's no um, accounts, there's no setups. Um, you know, you can tell your students to do lesson one, unit one, lesson one, or you could just say, here's the, here, here it is, practice on your own. Um, it, if you don't know putting English to work, it's, it's, there, it's a video series and it follows some ESL students in the U.S. and how they're coping with, you know, being in the U.S. about getting a job and making friends and this and that. And it, it's, a, it's a teacher, um, Ms. Marquez, and then her students. Um, and then it, all of them have worksheets that they can um, practice. And so, um, you know, that's, it's, it's, a, it's a really good program. It's very um, inclusive. All right. It's stretch time. Oh, everybody needs to take a stretch. If you can do what she's doing on the um, screen, 10 points to you. Any questions, Melinda, or comments? Well, I'm still looking at the picture. I would have to get a, an ambulance <laughs> if I did that. Um, yes, uh, there's a question. Can you post the last URL into the chat? It, I think it was two slides back is what we're talking. Okay. Um, um, was it putting English work or it could ESL have America? Been. ESL America, probably. There uh, we go. So ESLamerica.us. Yeah. Or if it was this one, it's uh, keeplearning.wearedace.org. There you go. And I would type all of the links in the chat for all of you, but I'm busy answering the questions in the Q&A. So <laughs> all of the, the links will be in the, um, the handout that we'll get from, from Elisa, and it will be posted on the OTAN website. And I'm just going to, while you're stretching and taking a break, uh, there's been quite a few questions to that. Uh, please understand that I'm answering questions as much as I can, <laughs> and I will miss a few, but... Um, all of the handouts for every webinar that we've done, we have to make them accessible and then they are posted on the OTAN website on that COVID-19 button that's on the website. You just click that and then you're taken there. Okay. So, and thank you, Kyle. Uh, he just posted a link. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I, I can't see the chat right now because I'm, I have my screen full, but right. um, but I mean, are we doing okay? Are you guys okay? hanging with me? <laughs> I'm, I'm hanging with you. <laughs> no, that doesn't count. Yeah, we, we do have one request to go a little slower, but I yes. don't think we can do that because we do have some time constraints. We have to end this so that we can open up the next webinar this afternoon. So we can't go too slow. 
So, but we will put up the recording so that you can rewind it and watch things as many times as you can want. Okay. Yeah. And I hear you totally. I mean, I, if, if I could, I'd really tried hard not to do to too many, but then as I was working on this, I thought, Oh, that's a good one. Or that's a good one. And so again, I don't want to overwhelm you, please, you know, watch the recording again, or, you know, um, get the, get the handouts and, and look at the slides and pick and choose one or two, if that to use, don't think that you have to use all of these. I'm just giving you my experience from my experience. I'm not doing all of these with all my students right now. I, I have done them with my students, but I'm not doing them all at the same time because they would be crying and um, it's just too much. Okay. And Elisa, we do have some questions in the Q and A, the keep okay. learning website, where, what, how, where's oh, that? <laughs> okay. So keep learning.wearedace.org is the LA Unified. It's the Department of Adults and Career Education. That's the putting English to work series. Okay. Uh, is using regular email an option? Sending lessons by mail, including letters of encouragement and resources during this time? Um, I think that was a two-part question. I didn't quite understand it. One more time. Is using regular mail an option? Oh regular mail okay. sending lessons by mail including letters of encouragement <clears throat> i mean of course it, it's always an option but i mean that's it depends on your school whether that's um an expense you're going to have to put up yourself or if your school is willing to do that there was small discussion when we first had our first staff meeting that was um one of the things that somebody had asked and um <clears throat> Um, our director encouraged us to just use um, uh, digital resources. Um, but again, if you're, I mean, so, but the exception with that was our high school diploma students. Um, some of them just can't get on and they're really struggling to, to graduate. And so we made packets for them. Okay. With that right. said, what I do, which I've been doing for years and years and years, and it's totally on my own volition. This has nothing to do with my school at all is I make postcards for my students and um, for whatever it is, whether, so I just sent some out yesterday for Easter and it says, you know, like happy Easter. I hope you're healthy. Da, 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 da. And I do postcards because it's cheaper. Obviously this, the stamps are cheaper, but, and they're easier. Cause I just, you know, I just make, I, I create them myself and I just print them and stuff and I cut them up and I send them off, but that's totally up to me. And because I have some students that have not connected with me and I want them to know that I'm still thinking about them. So um, I have done, I do snail mail with my students. Okay. Matter, regardless. Uh, so we have, uh, let's see, she said we should all know PHS. What is that? Sorry, never heard of it related to ESL. PHS. So it might have been, oh, oh VHS. Oh, yeah. VHS. Okay. And everybody knows VHS. I'm so, so happy. <laughs> okay. So it was just, yeah, misunderstanding. So it's VHS. Um, okay. Does Elisa need to use other apps or does she use Google Voice plus email as her only ways to communicate with her literacy classes. Yes, only Google Voice and email. Okay. I, I, I have tried, I tried to remind at the beginning of the school year and it was great for those students that were there that day and then I kind of like forgot about it the rest of the time and so I don't have a lot of students on the mind so I just, I skipped it. Okay. I mean, literally there are tons of ways you can do this. A couple of our teachers are total remind freaks. They, they love remind, it's very easy for them. But for me, it was one more thing to do. If I, looking back, if I were to go back again, I would have probably done things differently. But because I was so desperate to try to communicate with my students any way I could, these were the two things that I already knew I could do with them. But, um, but yeah, Remind or WhatsApp, um, you know, those are, are great resources also. Um, and you can learn about those in, in other sessions. Okay. Um, last, last question. What do you think of Flipgrid to create audio video lessons and receive audio answers from students? Is that too advanced? Um, no, I don't, th I don't think so to a point. Um, if you're comfortable with Flipgrid, that's one thing um, because then you know the ins and outs of it. Um, and then how do you communicate with your students how to get to the Flipgrid? You know what I mean? So there's so many elements to things. So it, it, again, it's just like our in class, everything has to be step by step. And so um, once they, it's gonna be trial and error. Once they do it and it's a little difficult, keep doing it again and it'll get easier and easier and easier. That's, that's true for all of this. It's gonna be difficult for some of the students 
two or three times, but you just have to keep giving it to them and eventually they'll start getting to it, just like in our classrooms. Um, I would not give up on something the first time if it didn't, if you, you know, if it was quote unquote a flop. Um, all right. So now those are like resources that they could do on their own, or again, like I said, managed instruction. And then these are kind of activities that we can do with our students that might make it fun. Um, maps or uh, Google Earth, Google Maps and Google Earth. Um, what I've done with my students is that I've had them look up a city um, in their native country, maybe they're, you know, where they're from, where are they from, and look it up in Google Maps. You will not, you will not believe how amazed they are to see like the little picture of their house or their town or whatever it is. Um, or even if you do it in the, in the house, their address today, you know, they have to show a little picture of their house. They're like, they just get so excited about that. A lot of them have used Google Maps, you know, for directions and things, but not really to look up things. And I'm going to show you uh, an email that um, I, I would send to my students on how to do these little activities. In Google Earth, um, I haven't used that yet, but I was playing around with it yesterday and it looks so amazing. I think maybe I'll try to do that in the future. YouTube. So one of the ways that I communicate with my students and it totally took me out of my comfort zone because I'm a selfie girl where I like to take photos of myself, but I'm not a video person. And I didn't ever really, I mean, even like on YouTube, I mean, even on Zoom and stuff, I don't usually have my video up. And um, just because I don't know, I just kind of felt uncomfortable, but I thought, you know, the students love you. Okay, please don't forget that your students love you and they miss you and they want to see you and they want to hear you, especially they miss that interaction with you. And so what I started doing was I started making YouTube videos because most of your students who are on the internet know YouTube in one shape or form. And, um, they're not professional at all. In fact, like the first ones, I look back on it, go, oh my gosh, but you know what? It is what it is. And as it's going, as time has been going on, I've learned a little bit more and they've gotten a little bit better, I guess, but still, it doesn't matter to me. I just wanted to um, make a video that the students can see me and, and hear my voice and, and know that I'm caring about them and things like that. And it's gone crazy. They absolutely love it. And that's how I gave my um, vocabulary test to them <laughs> was on YouTube. Um, okay, infinite resources. We all, we all use YouTube for one <laughs> for one thing or another, and your students do too. I did some interviews with some higher for some advanced students, and I said, "How did you learn? You know, how did you learn English?" And ninety percent of them said YouTube. I, I I don't know if there's certain YouTube you know channels or subscribers that they're they're watching, but their English was so good, and a lot of them said in their country they watch YouTube videos on um, you know practicing English. Um, this is my way to connect with students. Students can create their own YouTubes if you want, um, you know, but that's all in you know, advanced. And subtitles. That was the one thing that was important for me too, is that, um, that the YouTube videos have subtitles or closed captioning so that they could read what I was saying. All right, so those are all the resources that, that I have. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at um, what I'm talking about. I'm gonna get out of full screen. All right. So this is what I'm talking about when I was talking about Google Voice. Um, this is what it looks like. They're sending me, so this is a student's phone number. This is their actual phone number and they're sending it to me and it comes in like an email, but it tells me it's a text message. This is a voicemail that a student has sent to me. And if I click on it, okay, it looks like an email. And here's the transcribing. May I speak to open phone. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Of course, the transcription is not <laughs> exact. Um, I'm going to play it. I don't know if you're going to be able to hear it, but let's, let's check. And let's see. So this is what the Google voice, uh, you know, the face looks like. My, don't anybody okay. call that number. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I'm serious. Please don't call that number. That's Big two, leg open, phone. Big two, big two. Thank you. And next week, kitchen. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you. 
All right, so that's literally one of my students. <laughs> and, um, uh, oops. and um, you know, so I just was so happy that he even just texted me because he's one of the very, very low students. And for him to do it himself and not have somebody else do it for him, I was thrilled. So I texted him back saying, thank you for your message. You know, uh, I, I miss you. I love you. Stay healthy. And that was it. <laughs> I don't really even know what he said, but it was nice. Um, we were talking about um, the contact lists and such. Um, so this is my email that the students are responding me to. So I send them my, e I send them my uh, emails to them, and then they're responding back. Um, it depends on what it is. So these are all, so I started to be very good about, um, you know, managing, organizing them. And then of course I haven't. So that's why I have so many emails in my inbox right now. Um, Alice, I, are you tracking students work for attendance? Um, I am now. I didn't at the very beginning um, because I was a little bit overwhelmed because they're coming in so fast and so er erratically. But now I do. I have a, a sheet of paper with all of my students names and then I just check if they checked in with me that day or did their homework or and such and such because um, in my district our director has kind of indicated that that, that that's going to be a thing for us and I didn't want to have to go back you know a month's worth of work so I, I've started doing it excuse me just recently um, I just want to show you one of the emails real quick that I sent so this was, I think, before I did videos. I sent them a picture of me with, with a fruit, and I said, I like fruits. Do you like fruits? And then what fruit do you see in the picture? Okay, and that was it. It was literally me sitting on a chair, eating my snack, and, um, and I said, take a selfie with the fruit you have. I love you, stay healthy. So then here's one of the responses. I see a strawberry. And so my student has him with bananas. <laughs> so I didn't know if students were gonna do it or not, but they started doing it. It was really good. Um, this student, I, I didn't hear from him for a really long time. And then all of a sudden he started uh, doing it and there was this picture with an apple. <laughs> I also like apples. And so, you know, I read the sentences and I know he, did not write this sentence because I know him and I know his level of English, but you know what, at this point, I just don't care. Um, I, any response and that he did it and he checked the homework and he checked my email, I'm okay with, you know, at this point right now, it's not about instruction and it's not about, you know, um, uh, see, and I replied to him, thanks book. I love the picture. So I don't have to write lengthy emails back to them either. It's just, Hey, I, I see it. Great job. Thank you for doing it. Um, all right, where am I at? Okay, sorry, my um, internet. Okay, so here's learning chocolate. So like I was telling you, there are plenty of um, options for them, very basics, okay? The one thing I will tell you to make sure, I, I wrote this in an email when I did the learning chocolate, is I told the students, okay, see how there's so many ads? Okay, that could be a disaster. <laughs> so I just told them only the blue links, like only the blue, click on only the blue. And I said, anything that says start now or install, I said, do not, do not. You know, I had to keep like reinforcing that. So you might wanna do that with your students also. Um, so here's that one with basic colors. Um, okay, so they just listen. Yellow, orange. Yeah, it's very, you know, natural, natural sounding. And then here's the matching. So again, luckily for me, I did this in the classroom. We had started this in the classroom first, so they understood how to do it. But if you're just going to start doing this right now, you're going to have to take screenshots of this and show students how to do it because, or, or have them have somebody at home help them do this because they listen. Blue. And then they have to click and drag. Blue. Yeah, and then when they finish, they can check it. They check their answers. Okay. Alisa, so what of, app do you use to record your videos or to make a, a tutorial on this? Let's say you, you decide to create a video. How do you do that? Oh, okay. So if I wanted to make a video on, of me using this right now, like I'm doing right now, I would use Screencastify, uh, which I haven't even talked about, but um, 
but and there are plenty of OTAN um, trainers who have done web uh, webinars and workshops on Screencastify or um, what's the other one? Um, there, there's a bunch of them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what she said there's a there's a lot of information. Uh, just type in Screencastify on the OTAN website and. Uh, you'll probably come up with a tutorial. One more question here, and it's come up a couple times. I see ventures in the files. How is ventures used? Or do okay. you address that later? Yeah, uh, yeah, ventures real quick. So our school is using ventures, uh, the whole school, uh, um, all the levels are using ventures. And um, that's the main text that our director wants us to concentrate on. And um, I hope she's not in here because I'm going to tell you a secret. So please don't tell anybody else. Um, I haven't been as good as I could have been um, getting my students to do ventures because not a lot of them have bought the book. Um, and so I have done some things with it um, as far as I just told them, like unit um, eight is on jobs. So we will be studying about jobs. And if they had the book, you know, it was pages, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then we, um, as, a, as a program, have a website and the website has uh, the ventures, um, some ventures worksheets and stuff like that. And so I directed them to that, but that's pretty much all I've done as far as ventures go. But, um, I have access to eSource. Uh, if you're familiar with ventures, I have, we have access to eSource at home. And, um, if I'm able to get my students on zoom or hangouts, which I have not yet, um, I could probably do some lessons on ventures uh, with the eSource and the presentation tool. So that's, that's my, uh, my secret. Please don't tell my, uh, director. <laughs> uh, USA Learns, I'm not going to go too much into it. Um, a lot of you have seen it already. Um, but again, email required. That's the one. That's the one pit. Um, sorry, my screen is, I can't get to my other. <laughs> All right. Um, here's ESL America, um, the one I was telling you um, that was created by one of the teachers that I work with. And um, here are all the different options. I mean, there's so many, there's so many. Whoa. Okay. So some of them, like I said, are um, links to other um, websites. And then some of them are um, things that are teacher created. So I mean, it's such a plethora, a resource that is incredible. Typingclub.com. So here, typingclub.com, get started. And it's easy as that. Click here to begin. <laughs> That's it. I mean, and they start, they, they can just start typing, practicing typing. It's not going to save anything, obviously, but um, yeah, it's pretty good. It is a freemium um, where, um, you know, they want you to have a subscription and stuff, but there's plenty of plenty of things for them to do that are free. So that's kind of nice. Here is the um, DACE, the putting English to work. So here are the videos and the worksheets. And then they also included Newzella. Newzella, if you don't know what Newzella is, it's a, um, it's a website that has um, authentic articles in many different levels. So the same art, one article from authentic sources like Time or the New York Times or the Washington Post um, will have the article for advanced students, intermediate students, and beginning students, the same article. And they also have lesson plans that go with them and tests. Now it is, it was a subscription based um, website, but I heard that um, Newzella is offering their premium what their premium service for free for teachers i think for th three months or until august or something like that so you might want to check that out too i don't use it with my students but um, it's a little bit too hard for my students but um but if you have beginning uh high beginning maybe beginning low might be a little too hard still but beginning high and above uh, it would be a really good resource So this is the Google Maps that I was telling about, talking to you about. Um, this is how we did, we use, we actually use this for the um, EL Civics banking where they had to find two banks that were close to their home. And um, so you can actually do that with, with anything. You can find, have them find a supermarket or a library or, or 
<laughs> uh, Google Earth. Um, again, I haven't used it yet. I just started playing with it yesterday, but it looks really, really good. I mean, it's so beautiful. I mean, I, I like looking at this. I mean, I'm sure my students would like looking at this too. And when you get actually get into it, when you launch it, um, there's a whole toolbar on the side. If it would come up, yeah, there's a whole toolbar on the side and um, they can do lots of things on it. Um, I'm going to see if I have that. Yes. So here's a here. Okay. Oh, this is what I wanted to tell you. When I send emails, a, a group email like this, I don't put it in the two box. I put it in the BCC because I, here's one of the things you guys were asking. Somebody asked about the privacy. I don't share the other email addresses with all the other students. So I blind CC everybody. So they don't know, they're only getting it for themselves. They don't see who else gets the email. And so um, that's probably one of the ways that I kind of control maybe a little security or a little privacy. But this would be an email that I would send my students. I haven't sent it yet just because I want to fine tune it a little bit. But um, if I were to send them this email, if I can get it up. So I would, you know, good morning. Da, da. I give them instructions. Okay, just as if I were in the classroom. And then I say, go to the internet. Again, I don't say Chrome because they may not necessarily have Chrome. They might have Safari or something else. I don't write the word type here. <laughs> I did do this one because I didn't know how else to say it. I screenshot where I wanted them to write it. Choose nearby, I circled it. So a lot of this stuff is screenshots. Type bank in the box. Look for the red dollar sign. Tap or click. So before, we, when we were using Chromebooks, we didn't have mice, and so it was always tap, 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 tap. If we're in the computer lab, it's click. Well, I don't know which, what device they're using, so I do it both. And then this is what information I want them to look for. Take out a piece of paper, copy the questions. So it's very specific on what I want them to do step by step by step by step. And they can take as much time as they want on this um, because we're not in the classroom. I give them an example of what it could look like. And then I say, find one or two banks nearby your home, answer the questions, and then take a photo. Okay. So that would be like a typical email that I would send if I want to give instructions. So that's kind of like that thing at the very, very beginning when I was talking about. Um, um, direct instruction with a question mark. You know, I am giving them direct instructions here, but I'm not, I can't tell whether they understand or how well they'll understand or, you know, if they're with me or not. So all I can do is send it off and then I wait for them to reply or not reply and see how it goes. Um, so then the last part is YouTube. <clears throat> Excuse me. So here's my teacher page. For the most part, it's pretty user friendly um, to create a YouTube page. It goes with your Google account. So this, this is all connected with my Google account. And then these are my videos. You know, I, okay, please, please, please. I'm not trying to be an influencer. I'm not trying to go viral. <laughs> you know, I, I'm just trying to communicate with my students. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, with some videos. Um, so some of them have not turned out well, <laughs> and that's okay. Um, and then, because we're, <laughs> we're learning about jobs, um, you know, this in ventures, I asked a few of my friends to make a video of their job, and I gave them a little script, and they kept some, you know, they could keep to it or not keep to it, and, um, and explain it. So I'm just going to, I'll do one real quick. Um, let's see if this will, and you can see the closed captioning also. Good morning. My name is Larry Myers. I'm an engineer and electrical engineer and I designed the electrical systems for buildings including schools, hospitals, fire stations, supermarkets, and apartment buildings. Pretty much anything that needs electricity is what I can design. I like my job because every day is different. Every project is different. So I get to work on new things every single day. I usually work in an office with other engineers, but
but now we all have to work from home. So I'm by myself and I only communicate with people on the telephone or on the computer. But our office is pretty advanced and that's- I'm just gonna stop that there. But um, yeah, I mean, of Alisa, course. Yes. Um, what are the privacy settings on your YouTube videos? Okay, so um, right now the videos that I make myself um, are public. I, that's why you can see them on my line. The ones that are of other people, I have asked them. Uh, I tell them up, up front, I say, I'm going to put this on my YouTube channel. If, if that's not, and uh, I'm going to put this on my YouTube channel. If you're not comfortable with that, I can set the privacy, I can set the settings to private so that only the people, the only my students can watch it with the link. And so far, everybody's been okay with, with um, it being on my YouTube channel. And like I said, you know, pretty much the only people looking at my YouTube channel are my students. But I, again, you have to ask um, for that permission. How um, do people find your YouTube channel? How do people find mine? So yes. if you go into YouTube and you type Alisa teacher ESL, I think or like, those are like kind of tags that you can put on your channel. And then if people type that stuff in, my YouTube channel comes up. Um, so I did that with a few, with a few, so I was giving one a day and I, I emailed, I emailed my students and I gave them a link to the, to the YouTube and I had them answer questions. You know, what is Larry's job? Um, where does he work? What does he do? You know, and I did it the same for all the people who did it for me. Now, the one I did just the other day was I got a YouTube video from the mayor of Garden Grove. I, I reached out to the mayor of our city and I asked him if he would do this for us. And he, he did it right away. I mean, it was amazing. I was so excited. And um, so, uh, you know, that was really exciting for, for, for me. Uh, I don't know so much for my students, but um, so that's how, that's how I've been using the YouTube, the YouTube. Um, I am, so the very, very last thing is, uh, oh, Tan, I, 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 like I told you at the very beginning, I can't emphasize this enough. Uh, I please I urge you to go to the YouTube channel join YouTube you'll get all the you'll get resources beyond bleep um, you'll get emails telling you when new things are coming up or the webinars every week um, so the top stories are always going to be about the webinars for the upcoming week okay the uh, OTAN also has office hours if you have individual questions or you need some help with something there are times where you can reach out to OTAN and somebody will get hold of you. Here is the, um, the tab for the COVID-19 field support. It is a plethora of lessons, uh, or sorry, resources that you can utilize. 